A warm welcome to the 15th lecture on the subject of discrete time signal processing and its applications. And we proceed in this lecture to say more about the rational Z transform, how to invert it, how to deal with systems whose impulse response has a rational Z transform, what we can say about systems with a rational Z transform for the impulse response and so on. Right? So, we are going to spend quite a bit of time on the rational Z transform because that occurs very frequently in our use of LSI systems. Let us recall a couple of points that we talked about in the previous lecture. So, in the previous lecture, we had talked about the rational Z transform. Let me just recapitulate what it means. The rational Z transform is a Z transform which is a ratio of two finite series in Z. And an example can be 1 minus half Z inverse divided by 1 minus 1 fourth Z inverse 1 minus 1 third Z inverse. This is an example of a rational Z transform. Now, I must always emphasize that a Z transform has associated with it a region of convergence. A Z transform is always an expression with a region of convergence. It is incomplete without either. So, for example, if we look at this particular Z transform here, 1 minus half Z inverse by 1 minus 1 fourth Z inverse into 1 minus 1 third Z inverse, we have different possible regions of convergence based on the singularities. In fact, if you look at the denominator here, there are two singularities in the denominator one singularity at z equal to one fourth and one singularity at z equal to one third. Now, the points of singularity cannot be included in the region of convergence. So, what we need to do is to identify the possible regions of convergence by excluding these points of singularity. Let us see how to do that. So, we have the points of singularity to be one fourth and one third. Let us mark them in the z plane. We use the following convention now. We use crosses to denote the poles. Recall that the poles are the points where the denominator becomes 0. And we will use circles to denote the zeros. So, we have two poles here, and there is a 0 at the point z equal to half. This is, the, this is called the pole 0 plot. for the Z transform that we saw a minute ago. Now, these are singularities. The poles give you the singularities. And therefore, the regions of convergence must exclude these singularities. What possible regions of convergence can we have? Let us mark them. You have to identify concentric circles. So, this is the Z plane again complex plane. You have one fourth here, you have one third there. Let us draw concentric circles with the center at the origin passing through each of these singularities. Now, clearly, if you want simply connected regions, that is if you have regions where any two points can be joined by a line 
completely within that region, then there are only three possible simply connected regions that these two concentric circles can give. Let us mark them with different shadings. So, we have one like this. This is one possible region of convergence. The other like this. And the third one like this, I am just marking it externally, you know. Let me write these same regions of convergence down analytically. So, we have the three possible regions of convergence, mod z less than one fourth. And that is essentially the region where we have shaded like this. Mod z between one fourth and one third. And that is the region that we have shaded like this. Finally, mod z greater than one third. And that is the region that we have shaded like this. We expect that each of the, these regions of convergence would give us different sequences corresponding to the same expression. In fact, we will see in a minute how we can use the partial fraction decomposition strategically to arrive at these three different possible sequences here. There we go. So, we have 1 minus half z inverse divided by 1 minus 1 fourth z inverse times 1 minus 1 third z inverse can be decomposed by partial fraction expansion into two terms. To obtain this term, I multiply this z transform by 1 minus 1 fourth z inverse and put z equal to 1 fourth. So, I get 1 minus 4 by 2 divided by 1 minus 4 by 3. And here I get by multiplying by 1 minus 1 third z inverse and putting z equal to 1 third, 1 minus 3 by 2 divided by 1 minus 3 by 4. Now, of course, you can evaluate these. So, you know, let me call this whole thing, I do not really, I am not terribly worried what it is, let us call it A and let us call this whole thing B. So, you see, we have two terms now. We have A by 1 minus one fourth z inverse plus b by one minus one third z inverse. And let us take each region of convergence in turn. So, let us take mod z less than one fourth. If mod z is less than one fourth, of course, mod z is also less than one third. So, both of these terms would need to be expanded by using powers of z and not z inverse, is not it? So, we have to rewrite these. You see, the strategy is when you have a region of convergence, look at how it behaves with respect to each term. Here, you have two terms. Mod z less than one fourth behaves the same way for both the terms. If mod z is less than one fourth, it is also less than one third. So, you know you do the same thing to both the terms in this particular case. So, you have a times z divided by z minus one fourth plus b times z by z minus one third, which you can also rewrite as minus a z by one fourth minus z plus minus b z 
by one third minus z. Or if you like, you could even multiply numerator and denominator by 4. So, you know, let us let's rewrite this. So, you have minus 4 a z by 1 minus 4 z plus minus 3 b z by 1 minus 3 z. And, and the key is because mod 4 z is less than 1 and mod 3 z is also less than 1, you can expand these two terms in the following way. This becomes minus 4 a z times summation n going from 0 to infinity 4 z to the power of n plus minus 3 b z summation n going from 0 to infinity 3 z to the power of n. And from here, we can obtain the inverse z transform, we can obtain the sequence. Compare terms, compare powers of n. So, what you need to do is to look at the general expression for the z transform and compare powers of z raised to power of powers of z raised to the power of n in both of them. So, I leave it to you to complete this. In fact, I shall write down the answer and you know leave it to you to prove it. So, I have exercise show that the sequence is minus a 1 fourth raised to the power of n u minus n minus 1 minus b 1 third raised to the power of n u minus n minus 1. Now, I take the second possible region of convergence and there I am going to have a little bit of trouble. You see the second possible region of convergence is mod z between one fourth and one third. Now, this is a little tricky. When this is the case, of course, the partial fraction expansion does not change, that holds. So, you have a by 1 by 1 minus, I mean a by 1 minus one fourth z inverse plus b by 1 minus one third z inverse, but then mod z is greater than one fourth, but mod z is less than one third. So, there is a different way by which we treat this term and this term. So, here you would have to do a different kind of expansion. You would have to expand it by keeping the powers of z inverse in the first term. So, we would have to expand a into one fourth z inverse to the power n summed n going from 0 to infinity plus. Now, here I will take minus 3 b z times summation n going from 0 to infinity 3 z to the power of n. And from here, we would be able to recognize by comparing term by term. Interestingly, this term would give us positive powers of z inverse. And this would give us negative powers of z inverse. Positive powers of z or negative powers of z inverse. Positive powers of z inverse or negative powers of z, however you like to look at it. But in the expression for the z transform, the positive powers of z inverse give us the samples at positive n and the negative powers of z inverse give us, give us the samples at negative n. So, there we go. Again, I leave it to you as an exercise to recognize these terms.
and show that they come together to form e times one fourth raised to the power of n u n minus b times one third to the power of n u minus n minus one. Finally, we take the third possibility. The third possibility is where mod z is greater than one third. So, of course, if mod z is greater than one third, it is also greater than one fourth. Mod z is greater than one third. So, of course, the expansion proceeds as a times one fourth to the power of n you know, I mean essentially uh, one fourth to the power of n z raised to the power minus n if you please, summation n going from 0 to infinity. You know, recall you must always keep the powers of z there. So, 0 to infinity b times one third to the power of n z raised to the power of minus n. So, this is easy, you know, in this case the inverse is very easy to calculate. this essentially corresponds to a times one fourth raised to the n u n plus b one third raised to the power of n u n. Now, notice that in the first region of convergence, we got what is called a lift sided sequence, a sequence which is non-zero only for or only towards the left of a chosen point. In this case, you could take that chosen point to be n equal to 0. So, in the first region of convergence, we have a left sided sequence. What is a left sided sequence? A left sided sequence is a sequence which is non-zero to the left of a chosen point. Typically, that chosen point is 0. Now, the sequence that we got in the third region of convergence is what is called a right sided sequence. It is non zero to the right of a chosen point, and that of course chosen point happens to be n equal to 0. In the second slightly tricky case, we have what is called a double sided sequence. So, it is neither left sided nor right sided, it is double sided. In fact, it is doubly infinite. It is infinite in extent to the left and it is infinite in extent to the right. Of course, you can have sequences that are finite in extent to the left and finite in extent to the right and of course, they have to be finite length sequences. So, a finite length sequence is you know you can view it as neither left sided nor right sided if you please, but it is definitely not doubly infinite. right? Anyway, so much so. Now, this gives us an idea how we deal with the region of convergence and it also convinces us of the importance of the region of convergence. 